Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Three, two, one, and we are back, and I'm running solo today because Julie has a cold. So great news for all of you. Interest rates have plummeted, and they're going to continue to fall. So if you've got any buyers that are on the fence and have been waiting for interest rates to fall, now is your opportunity. And if you've got any sellers that are thinking about buying uh, because they're waiting for interest rates to fall, guess what? Same thing. And don't forget... All of the folks that you have sold houses to since the middle of last year are going to probably be very interested in refinancing their rates, uh, refinancing their mortgages, including you. So open your mind to all these opportunities, guys. This can be your market because of this market. Speaking of which, what I'm focusing on with you guys today is one of the best sources of business, consistent business, which is repeat and referral. Now, I want you to combine these two thoughts before we get to the first point. You have repeat and referral, or rather you have past clients, you have friends and family, you have people you know from just different social circles. Call all of them now. Don't mail, don't email, don't text, don't post on Facebook. Not the same. Call all of them on the phone and have conversations with them and let them know what's going on in the mortgage uh, mortgage markets. This is something that all of them are going to be very interested in knowing about because frankly, if it doesn't directly positively affect them, it will other people in their lives. So make the most of an opportunity like this and put the word out that interest rates are indeed falling. Will they continue to fall? Who knows? In your humble coach's perspective, I believe they are going to fall. I do not believe for a second interest rates are going to continue to rise. We've been saying that for about the past 18 months. We thought they wouldn't go much higher than where they were prior to this drop in rates for a whole bunch of reasons that gets into sort of, you know, money manage or, you know, uh, money theory and things like, you know, essentially uh, money supply and inflation and all these other types of things that will bore most of you to tears. So I will not talk to you about it, but here's all that matters. The bell is ringing for opportunity. Make sure you're letting your clients know about it. And again, start with your centers of influence and past clients. So let's drill down and let's talk about how to build your lead generation machine from your centers of influence and past clients. Now, when you join Premier Coaching, and you can join now for free by texting the word Premier to 47372, by texting the word Premier to 47372, or just go to premiercoaching.com. And when you join, you will quickly learn that the first thing we're going to suggest all of you do is indeed build your center of influence and past client list. Now, that is going to be job one, as I said. Why? Because that will require, ready for it, the least amount of skills for you to get the most result. It's not where you stop, though. But it is where you start when you're building your lead generation spokes. When you're calling your centers of influence and past clients and your friends and your family, chances are they're going to do business with you just because you're offering to help them. And you don't have to be too worried about having high level scale sales skills. That's the reason that most agents gravitate towards that business. But I'll strongly caution you if that you cannot have that as your only spoke. Because in all of our decades long of doing real estate coaching and training, the agents that suffer the most when the markets change, especially like they have been, are the ones that never develop skill beyond centers of influence and past clients. But do know this. Many surveys have shown that when someone is making a decision about what they'll, who they'll hire or, frankly, what they'll buy uh, to provide a service, they first ask, whom do I already know? So I'm going to set this up for you guys. You have to hire a roofer today to fix a roof leak, Right. Now, the first thing you're going to do, now really drill down in your mind and think about what I'm saying. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, right, or your spouse or your partner, you know, who do we already know that can fix this roof leak? Then the next thing that's going to happen is if you don't know somebody that could fix the roof leak, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to ask a trusted friend or an advisor. And then after that, almost never, you're going to then respond to an ad or a solicitation. And I'm going to give you actual numbers. This, re this research has been done uh, consistently, and the numbers almost coming are always uh, coming up the same. And I want you to be very clear that ads include social media, ads include uh, you know review websites like Angie's List and things like that. Those are all ads. 
Those are going to be the least effective way to generate consistent business. The most effective is going to be obviously centers of influence and past clients. So here are the numbers. When you're looking for a roofer, 80% of the time, if you already have one that you trust, that's the person you're going to use again. That's how everyone, you know, basically that's the number that comes out consistently. I've seen it as high, that number as high as 91%. Number two, and if you don't know somebody, what's going to then happen is most people are going to uh, turn to a center of influence and past clients. So in Julie's notes, it says if they don't know anyone, they ask a trusted friend or advisor who, who they do know, and 6% of the time, that's who they're going to choose to, to use as their trusted friend or advisor. Well, you do the math, guys. That leaves virtually never is someone actually going to respond to an ad. Think about that. Think about how much time and effort you're spending on marketing and branding, where we know most people are choosing their real estate professional based on someone they already know, love, and trust, and or a referral from a trusted friend or advisor. Focus your energies on being in one of those two categories, and, and then don't focus all your best energies on the branding. The branding is a essentially could be, uh, for many of you, the end of your real estate careers because you're neglecting your centers of influence and past clients. So I'm going to share this with you too. Um, in all Julie's 20 and I plus years of real estate coaching and training, the biggest regret, <laughs> I'm saying this knowing that some of you are thinking this already, uh, that any top producing agent will have, the biggest number one regret they'll always have is going to be not working their centers of influence and past clients at a higher level. And at a higher level does not mean mailing them more stuff. At a higher level does not mean you know, um, dropping off more tchotchkes at their houses and pumpkin pies in November and all the rest of it. What they always are saying they wish they would have done more frequently is have actual conversations with their centers of influence and past clients in an organized way. That's really the bottom line. And that's point number one. So in here, I'm going to give you how many points do we have? We have three points. This is good. So point number one, have an organized database with names, numbers, email addresses. Like, you know, you can search through LinkedIn, Facebook, now, obviously, the further away you get from your, uh, your, say, your database on your phone and you start searching around on LinkedIn, the less sort of personal contact you'll have with those people. But do go through all of your CRMs and all your different databases and your old cell phone list, your new cell phone list, your old Facebook list, right? You guys get the point. And start gathering that information. Now, the, your, if, you have, if you're starting at ground zero, let's say you're a new agent or even worse, frankly, you're an agent that's been in the business forever and you're now creating your database for the first time. We're going to give you a little hack to making it so that you can do that in a systematic way without driving yourself crazy. A lot of you are having to rebuild your databases or build them for the first time. And it's an overwhelming, you know, essentially a sense, sense of dread having to organize all of it. Um, and the biggest sense of dread comes with what are you going to say after you've got that list organized? How are you actually going to make contact with them? And your mind is telling you, oh my gosh, if I call this person now and I haven't talked to him in two years, they're just going to think that I'm only calling them for the sake of basically getting business from them. They're going to think that I'm only here to try to use them. That's what a lot of your egos are telling you. But I'm going to tell you guys something that will be hopefully a big sense of relief for you. They don't know the last time they talked to you. They're not keeping track. <laughs> they don't know that you haven't spoken to them in two years or three years or six months, right? They have no clue, don't remember, you're not the thing that's top of mind in their lives. They are and their families are. You guys get it? So don't use the fact that you haven't been doing a very good job keeping in contact with these people as your excuse not to, guess what, keep better contact with them. Number two, speak with all of your contacts regularly. That means face-to-face, voice-to-voice as in real contacts. A, con a, a contact is a conversation with a decision-making adult about real estate. And, you know, we've got gobs of podcasts about this. So refer to our coaching and podcasts about the Ford script. And that's family, occupation, recreation, dreams. But when you're in premier coaching, we actually give you real scripts of what you're supposed to say. And when you're building your centers of influence and past client system, the way we're going to ask you to organize this, and I'm going to get into this more in point number three, but the way we want you to organize this is th so that you essentially, let's say, you know, there's 30 days in the month, right? We want you maybe take weekends out to make contacts every single day to your centers of influence and past clients. I get, I'm, gonna, I'm stepping on a future point here, but just remember that. So you're going to call you know, Bob and Betty uh, every day on the first. Do you guys get it? I'm sorry, every month on the first. What am I going to say? I'm not calling them too frequently. You're going to say things because you're going to use our scripts that they're going to want to hear. They're going to look forward to your phone call because you're bringing something of value. Here's the easiest thing you can do. I gave it to you at the top of today's podcast. Call them and let them know about interest rates. 
Julie and I were poking around on the internet looking for rates, and it looks like rates are about to go less than 6%. Uh, Friday, they were above 7%. You following me on this? Who's not going to want to hear from you? So point number three, uh, systematically expand your center of influ influence. 10% of the number of people in your database will do business with you or refer you someone every year, assuming you communicate with them. Again, communication for the sake of what we're describing is a direct person-to-person -person or voice-to-voice -voice conversation. If your database is 100 people strong, you have at least 10 transactions per year from them if you ask. With a mistake you guys make, and I know you're sold into believing that this will work and it doesn't, is by mailing them things or doing passive things that you're then going to pick up transactions from them on a consistent basis. You will get some business from them, but nothing like will, uh, will uh, come from you calling them. And remember, a phone call does not cost you any money. Not spending a lot of money on speculative things in this market, I'm sure you'll agree, is a smart move for all of you. By the way, for those of you who have not yet joined Premier Coaching, just text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. Remember, when texting, message and, dates, uh, message and data rates may apply. And again, Premier Coaching for the first month is free. So just text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. Now, let's get back to your database. So if your goal is to do 10 transactions per year, and you have 10 centers of influence and past clients. Remember, not all of the people in your list are going to be of the same, you know, I'm air quoting here, but quality, right? Some of them you're actually going to have a very close relationship with. Maybe they're friends for a long time, people you know at the gym. Others, you're going to have more of a distant relationship with them. So not all of the 100 people or 500 people in your database are the same. And I'm also going to suggest this. There are a lot of agents that celebrate having massive databases. Massive databases that you're just uh, you know, digitally marketing to or following on Facebook or mailing to is not the same as having a smaller database that you're making phone calls to. In a market where everybody else is going wide thinking that the numbers will essentially result in them getting better results, they are quickly discovering that is the same uh, path that everyone else took. Let me describe so your center of influence and past client, um, mostly centers of influence, why would you assume they're not in 10 other agent centers of influence and past client lists? Maybe even your past client lists, honestly. They could have done transactions with other people that you just don't know about, real estate deals, right? So your you know, coveted center of influence and past client list, there are, those people are probably also being solicited by you know, 20 other people. Julie and I tell this story. Uh, we tell it jokingly, but truthfully, every time we tell the story, I feel sorry for the agent. But... This happens every year. The story goes like this. There is a, a long, a lot of you, well, in case you don't know about this, there's a lot of agents who every November for Thanksgiving will deliver pumpkin pies to their centers of influence and past clients uh, doorsteps. Some of them have uh, are essentially giving away so many pumpkin pies that they can't deliver them anymore. They have to wait for, uh, they have to basically set up some sort of stand in their parking lot and then people will show up and pick up their pumpkin pies. I mean, you're talking about a major expense. And I've seen conversations where people are talking about how to buy like 500 pumpkin pies from Costco and things like that. I don't think that is a great a use of your time or your money. And here's an example as to why it probably is not. So the story goes like this. This is one of Julie's coaching clients from a long time ago. So the agent dropped off a pumpkin pie. Uh, that seller was not home. They had a nice little gift box. And now I want you to think about all this. this, this you're talking about, you know... This is not free, right? Not to mention the time that was put into this. So the agent left this pumpkin pie on the doorstep for the center of influence of past clients. Well, they get a livid call from that uh, homeowner being super pissed off because on the box where this nice pie was, was their business card, a nice little handwritten note, the whole thing. They did it right. I mean, technically, they, they made something, a real attempt here. What did they not do? They did not have direct contact with that seller. They left said pumpkin pie on the doorstep and something they assumed raccoons decided to have a you know pumpkin pie party on their doorsteps and there were just pumpkin pie remnants everywhere and it was just a big nasty mess and that agent had to they you know had to go over there basically and clean up the mess and they're incredibly embarrassed i want you to think about that now here's the other thing that happened and actually this happened with my one of my agents i had a new coaching client and this was a while ago like 15 years ago Dropping off, guess what? Pumpkin pies. We knocked on the door early, like Saturday or Sunday morning. Um, and the seller sort of like opened the door, was courteous, but not like overly friendly. 
uh, this agent gave this pumpkin pie to this seller or to this owner, right? Not yet a seller, just center of influence and past client. Said owner then puts said pie down on a table in their foyer where, guess what? We're sitting there. That's right. You guessed it right. Other pumpkin pies from other agents. You getting the point? Now, had you not dropped any pumpkin pie off, but you'd actually made the phone call to that seller and then, uh, you know, conveying something in that phone call of tremendous value that they wanted to hear, my example a second ago about interest rates, do you think that's going to have a more lasting impression on that potential, on that owner, maybe seller, uh, than giving them yet another pumpkin pie? I'm trying to make you laugh, but I'm trying to make a point here. Why are so many people dropping off tchotchkes? Because they don't want to make phone calls. Why don't they want to make phone calls? Because they're afraid of being rejected. They're afraid, all these ego things. Oh, I'm afraid of being rejected. I'm afraid of that person thinking I'm only in it for myself. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. What really is holding you back, I'm going to save you guys a lot of coaching and training here, is not knowing what to say. That's it. If you know for a fact that when you made the phone call, the person receiving the phone call or face-to-face is going to welcome what you have to say, would you still feel the same level of resistance? Now, I want to be clear. You will always feel some level of resistance having any kind of uh, you know, exchange uh, with anybody. That's just part of life. It's part of being human. You might get rejected. They might ask you a question you don't know the answer to. This is the reason you get coached and trained. This is the reason you know what to say and how to say it. And here's the thing that really is exceptionally exciting if you have your head screwed on straight. In a market, in a world where people have forgotten or never learned how to have meaningful conversations with folks, to actually know how to talk with people at a high level, you're going to have an unfair advantage. You, when you know how to pick up the phone and you know how to conversa- have a conversation that is delivering tremendous value to your, you know, the person you're calling, you will look forward to those calls because the calls are going to result in you getting constant positive reinforcement. That's what we want for you because then you take the first step to being free, being free from having to buy leads, being free from having to be a sucker to whatever latest, you know, whiz, bang, shiny object comes your way. When you learn how to earn the right to essentially be of service to other people through your skill set, knowing what to say and how to say it, you will be excited about what you do every single day. How long are you going to wait to have that emotional response to the work you do? How many of you right now are listening and you're thinking in your heads, I am never doing that. I will never make a phone call. I'm going to instead spend a whole crap ton of money mailing them postcards and doing a whole bunch of digital stuff. Okay, you can and you will get a result from it. I'm not saying you won't, but it'll be, it'll be nothing in comparison had you actually picked up the phone. And you will always have it in the back of your mind that you wish you would have done the real work of real estate. I promise you. You don't believe me? Go find a top producing agent. Ask them what their biggest regret is in their careers. Every single one of them are going to say, I did not have enough direct contact with my centers of influence and past clients. That is a fact. Don't I mean, look, guys, learn from the mistakes of others. You know, what it was a, a smart man learns from his mistakes, a brilliant man learns from the mistakes of others. Are you listening to what I just said? It will save you a lot of angst. It'll make you a lot more money as you help a lot more people. Isn't that more exciting? And again, the 10% rule does work. So if you've got 1,000 people, which is really not manageable. Remember I was saying the the, uh, win, uh, uh, don't focus on how many people are in your list. The bigger your list is, the less manageable it's going to be. The bigger the list is, the less uh, direct contact you're going to have. You want the direct contact. That's where the juice is. You want the direct contact. That's where the power is. You know what I'm saying. You, you understand clearly what I'm saying because you are experiencing that in your own life. Remember, when you need to hire a roofer to fix the roof on your house, the first thing you're going to do is go to someone that you used in the past. Where did you most likely find that roofer who fixed your roof in the past? From a referral from a trusted friend or an advisor, not from an ad. Marketing, any kind of marketing, branding, marketing, advertising, all of it, appeals to maybe 4 to 6% of all people making decisions on who they're going to hire, what they're going to buy. Isn't that shocking? Here's what's shocking. Now that you know that, how many of you are still going to start spending all or still going to spend all your time and money hoping and praying that you're going to be able to be clever enough with your marketing and your funnels and your branding and all the rest of it that you won't ever have to do the real work of real estate. By the way, not just real estate, any business the direct contact makes the difference. Always, every time, always will be, especially as we enter into a new age with regards to AI and all these sort of digital assistants, which everyone has to love. 
You don't think I'm going to be able to use AI to start doing the real work of real estate. No, what you should be thinking about is how to leverage the technology to do everything other than making those direct contacts because that's where you're going to have the advantage. I Hopefully, you guys are understanding what I'm saying. And the more high-end your focus is, the more absolutely critically important it is that you make direct contacts and you're not basically relying on digital. Everybody does the digital. Everybody does the passive. It's the least effective. It requires the least amount of skill. And frankly, it's the quickest destroyer of real estate careers because agents never learn how to do the real work of real estate. All right, so let's talk about this. How are you going to expand your center of influence and past clients? Julie wrote down several points for us. There are three categories in which to expand your centers of influence and past clients. Number one, things you like to do anyway, hobbies, gym, you know, going to the arts, doing, you know, frankly, kid events. If you have a kid, that's, you know, if you think about a great place to meet people, if you have kids, do the kid events. You're going to be surrounded by people you already have a lot in common with, i.e. their children. Go to go on organized hikes. Don't, you know, don't be the guy or gal that shows up at the gym, put your earbuds in, wears the hat, keeps your eyes down, don't make any contact. That's good. You got a good workout. But why don't you use that as an opportunity to make lots of new friends, to expand your center of influence? That's how you do it. It's incredibly easy to make contacts with people when you uh, have something in common with them. Hobbies, sports, arts, working out at the gym. These are all things that already you have in common. It's a great sounding board. And you know as well as I do, when you get to know somebody that you're, say, you know, doing some charity event with, you're going to talk about what they do and what you do, and now you've expanded your real estate center of influence and past clients. Even if that person had a previous agent that they used, the very fact that both of, both of you share some you know, common thing, maybe it's the gym or maybe it's arts or maybe it's you know, you're into sports cards or horses or whatever it is, the very fact that you have that common personal interest is going to make you elevated in their minds because frankly, you have that in common. I mean, like some of you will do, go to uh, dog parks. That's a great place. You already have dogs in common, right? You guys get the point. Do what you, be you, doing what you like to do, just do more of it. Oh, I'm, I like to golf and I like to golf every week with the same three or four people. Not what I'm talking about. If you're going to golf, golf more. I know you heard me say it, but golf with different people. You got to expand the people that you know. That's the whole point. And don't golf, you know, whole, the whole course, just go golf part of it. And maybe with a different group of people, golf another part, expand your center of influence and past client, being you, doing what you like to do with people that you know you're going to like because you already have it in common with them. Uh, the next three cate- next category of the three, business networking. Now, again, this is going to be an environment which will be easier for some of you that are more introverted, right? So business networking, international chamber of commerce, tem- uh, Toastmasters, entrepreneurial club, investors clubs, and so forth. Go to those environments because it's the expectation that people are going there for the sake of doing business. In some markets, there's going to be very well organized investor meetups and things like that. Again, People are going there not to talk about their dogs or their cats or their, you know, ski vacations. They're going there to talk about business. And again, some of you are going to be more inclined that way. And that's going to be easier than uh, doing more of the social stuff, right? So that's fine. Or do both. There's an idea. The next point Julie wrote down for expanding your centers of influence and past clients. And this one's incredibly powerful to more in some markets more than others. Charitable events, auctions, food drives, toy drives, fun dry, uh, fundraisers, school and church events. Now, some of you are going to want to start your own, um, whatever it is, right? Involve yourself in a whole bunch of other people's events before you try to start your own. Go to be of value to other people who have already organized how to do the local, you know, uh, fundraiser for the school or, you know, new church uh, edition or, you know, involve yourself in the community. You don't have to be the organizer. Be the participant. You get the same benefit with a heck of a lot less work and then involve yourself in more things. You guys get it? Open your minds. Be around other people. Do Being you. You don't have to walk around being, you know, the, so what I'm trying to do is break through your resistance to being like some of you guys want to be secret agents. You don't want to tell anyone you're in real estate because your mind is filled with what they might think about you. Look how much that is working against your ultimate result, which is helping other people and making money. You're focusing on yourself when you're saying, I don't want to show up uh, with my golf buddies and talk about um, real estate because I don't want them to think that I'm just here for the sake of real estate deals. And I don't want them to see how often your mind is filling with the word I. That's just your ego firing off. How about this? How will you feel when you show up to play golf 
with your group of buddies from the wherever club and you discover that they're doing business with other people, how are you going to feel? You will feel personally insulted because after all, don't they know you're in real estate? No, they didn't. Or maybe they thought you were too busy, too successful, frankly, too lazy. And that would be the reason you never asked them for business. You guys get it? So by you focusing on yourself and you worried about what they might think of you when you actually are bringing up real estate, you're killing your potential and you're only going to, some of you unfortunately, find out when you lose deals from people that would have loved to have done business with you. So if you don't let them know, and again, we script you on how to say this, text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. If you don't know how to have conversations with people, which a lot of you don't, uh, you are not going to do it. And that's the reason you're uh, a secret agent. But if you knew what to say and you knew how to say it and you were excited about having those conversations because you know the result's going to be something positive, you would have to, I mean, you're going to do it all the time, right? You're going to have conversations with people all the time. That's called having skill. Isn't that better than now? It is, isn't it? All right. So here's the way to organize your uh, ultimate, the creation of your CRM. Let's, I'm going to assume you're starting at ground zero or maybe you're, you're polishing it off. If you're starting from ground zero, go to the first list and gather up all the first idea here that Julie had for us and go to all the places where you might have stored uh, contact data, old CRMs, KB Core maybe, wherever. Go to those sources and download all that data. And then every single day, here's what you're going to do. Put yourself uh, on this, I was going to say steady diet, diet, and that's really what it is, of adding five people to your CRM every day. But you can't just add them. This isn't just some analytical database building exercise. You have to add them. You have to update them. So you have to call them. That's what I want you to do. Use our scripts. Update them. You can check them out on social, right? Find out what's going on with them. So every single day, make it part of your existence now to add five people to your center of influence and past client list. This is assuming you don't have one centralized organized list. Now, if you do, I want you to go through your existing list and I want you to actually, this is the hard part, find out how many actually are no longer in your market. Find out how many actually are no longer really should even be in your center of influence and past client list. Because if you've been working them passively, which most of you have, if you've been working them at all, you're going to discover that a lot of those people, they're not really your center of influence and past clients because guess what? You weren't really doing anything to earn the right for them to be your center of influence and past clients. And they're doing business with somebody else. Your goal is to not have a enormous CRM with a bunch of leads. That is a huge mistake because you're never going to be able to have personal contact or even passive meaningful contact with any of them. There are too many to manage. Okay? Think about what I just said. Many of you, if you sell, you know, 10 houses a year, 25 houses a year, 50 houses a year, 100 houses a year, you have an incredible year. You will make tons and tons of money. The average commission in the United States is well over $10,000. So this is a great first spoke. Again, the th first thing we'll suggest all of you do is create your center of influence and past client list. So yes, build it up every day by adding three people or five people. Go through your existing list if you have one and intentionally purge. Use social. Facebook is great to find out what the heck's going on with people's lives if you haven't been, kept, been keeping up with them. And then um, when you do call them using our scripts, you'll know what the latest news is. You know, Johnny just, you know, graduated from high school or Susie just, you know, won some big contest. You guys get it. Have that information in front of you when you're calling them because it works perfectly with our scripts. If you want to join Premier Coaching, text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. Now, after you've added these people to your list, then you call them back on the same exact day every single month forever. If you want to do the passive stuff, the mailers and the other stuff, you do that. It, you, cho you can choose to do that uh, after you you know, make the calls. Do not not make the calls. Do not think that you can do the passive stuff and get the same results. You can't. For all the reasons, hopefully, I've explained to you during our 28 minutes together today, this will work out to be the most important spoke in your lives if you actually do it correctly out of the gates, uh, or it'll be the biggest regret if you don't. This is going to be the thing that will oftentimes be, uh, give you the most, uh, like you'll be able to, if you work this correctly, let's say you have 300 people in your list, which most of you can pretty easily work up to. 
your dry cleaner, your, the guy that, you know, your roofer, your friends from high school, your, uh, like, here's another one. Um, if you have children and they're older, well, how about all the kids' teachers from when they were coming up, your old neighbors, your new neighbors, you guys get it? Not to mention, obviously, real estate transactions and people you've done business with. Don't treat some just cold lead like they're the same as the center of influence and past client. They're not. The centers of influence and past client is in your business, and this might shock some of you, the only thing of value in your real estate business, in any private services business, the only thing that has value is this list. That's it. Your brand has no value, sorry. It only has value to you. Your brand has uh, your, your reputation, all these things. If you stopped um, marketing and advertising in your particular marketplace and you're 100% marketing and advertising based and you never actually did any direct proactive contacts to any of these folks, they would all forget about you instantaneously. You would not, your business would be eviscerated inside six months if you stopped the branding and the marketing and advertising. If you did the branding and the marketing and advertising, to reinforce the proactive lead generation activities, which we focus on in our coaching program, then you've got something. But the point being is once you've gotten good at the proactive lead generation things, then you can choose not to do the passive, more expensive, frankly, more risky marketing, advertising, branding activities. Hopefully this makes sense to all of you. I know for a fact that some of you are wishing you would have done this in the past. Well, there's an old saying, right? You guys know this, hopefully. The best time to have planted a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. This is your warning bell. Get on the phone. Do it urgently. The interest rates are falling. There's going to be a surge of real estate activity. This will shake loose some listing activity for sure, but get on the phone. Start working the phones. Expired listings are going to be a shockingly good source of business because what's going to happen in the marketplace, a lot of the expireds that had expired, didn't expire because there was anything wrong with the price condition location. I'm going to say that again. A lot of the expireds in the marketplace expired because of the fear that was in the market from interest rates. The, essentially, the FOMO had sort of you know stepped uh, off stage. Now it's going to start coming back. Call the expireds. Oftentimes, this is for sale by owners as well, oftentimes their price that it expired at or that maybe the FISBO has it listed at will be the correct price or guess what, listeners, you can even raise the price, right? So FISBO, you might run into, you know, they maybe they want 600000 for the house and that has to be 600 net no matter what, that's just what they're dug in on. Uh, and But you've got to, you know, what's going to happen, how is the commission going to get paid? You might find over the next 60 to 90 days because the FOMO that's going to be created in the uh, real estate markets because the interest rates are going to fall, you might find that you can actually price the house so that they, they net 600 and all the selling fees go, go on top. Please open your minds to what I'm saying. There's opportunities all around you, but you've got to stop doing the passive stuff, start doing the proactive stuff. You will be in control. When you know every single day you can wake up and you can create a listing, you can create a real estate transaction, how are you going to feel? Isn't that the reason you got into real estate? Because you wanted that sense of control, because you wanted that sense of self-determination, because you wanted that sense of freedom. Well, earn it. That's your time. This is your warning bell. This is your opportunity. Do something with this information. By the way, yes, we do strongly suggest that all of you who are interested in going after expireds definitely consider Red X. Text the word RED, R-E-D, to 47372. Text the word RED, R-E-D, to 47372. They're your all-in-one expired lead generation system. It's a system that Julie and I used when we sold real estate. We've recommended it for obviously tens of thousands of you over the years. Text the word RED, R-E-D, to 47372. They'll, or rather will, text you back a link and you can join Red X for, I think it's a $150 discount, which is, you know, fantastic. Remember when texting message and data rates may apply. Thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.